Hello! And happy Halloween! <laughs> it was really lucky that Halloween is following on Wednesday, which is what I'm trying to make my focusing day. Anyways, so to celebrate Halloween, I decided to draw the Sabretooth Guild members from an anime that you may have heard of called Fairy Tale. It's quite a popular anime. For anyone watching who doesn't know, it's an anime about wizards who join a guild and then they go on jobs and fun stuff happens. <laughs> and the people I'm drawing are from a guild called Sabretooth. And they are probably my favorite guild, which is why I'm drawing them. It's also kind of inspired from a drawing that Hiromashima posted to his Twitter, who's the person who made Fairy Tale. I think he posted it a year ago now? I think it was last Halloween or the year before or whatever. But he posted a picture of the Sabretooth gang in Halloween costumes and I thought it was really cute, so I guess it's somewhat inspired from that. The costumes aren't the same. I believe in his sting is a vampire and rogue is a werewolf, which is what I made them. But it's not exactly the same. I had a lot of fun <laughs> drawing these drawings. For one, I love Fairy Tale. It's probably my favorite show. I adore it a lot. I don't talk about it a lot online, but anyone who knows me personally will know that I absolutely love this series. And I really love Sabretooth and I really love Halloween. <laughs> and I think the drawings turned out really nice. So I had so much fun and I had a lot of fun playing with different techniques, like the flannel that you'll see on Rogue's uh, shirt. <laughs> the flannel that he's wearing and then the smoke in one of the drawings. I had a lot of fun playing around with different opacities and stuff. I decided to make the drawings more simple and kind of more chibi-esque because there is a lot of them. There is like, I don't know, like eight drawings, I think, something like that. These drawings took me about two hours each, so it didn't take me very long at all. I also had a lot of fun because I'm using a new program. This one is Paint Tool Sci, which is a program I'm sure you are familiar with. And I really love this program. It's a really nice program. I can see why it's so popular with so many people. For one, it's a pretty easy program to get used to. I feel like a part of that is because I have some experience with digital art, and even though I'm not the most experienced, I have used other programs, so I kind of have a general idea as to how this one works. But I also really like the blending modes, like the luminosity blending mode, which I use to add the highlights, which make it pop a lot. I haven't seen that one in a lot of programs, and I really like it. And I also like the brushes available, like I used the crayon tool to both sketch and do the line art because I thought it gave a nice texture without being too overwhelming. Now, kind of the drawbacks I found from using this program? The first two are kind of more of my issue, like I couldn't find any brush that had any sort of pressure sensitivity, and so I had to kind of fake pressure sensitivity by using the eraser tool and erasing some of the lines. Now if I went into the settings of the program and in my tablet, I'm sure I could figure that out, but I just haven't yet. <laughs> Although I don't really mind not having the pressure sensitivity for these drawings because I feel like it helps with the simplicity that I wanted these drawings to kind of have. Another thing that kind of made these a little bit difficult is that I'm not used to the keyboard shortcuts <laughs> and I tried looking in the different settings in the program and I couldn't really find where I can edit them or at least see what they are and I'm sure I could just google it but I couldn't find it like within the program so I'm still kind of getting used to the shortcuts because they are a bit different from other programs that I've used. Now those two are kind of my problems <laughs> and then the next few are kind of problems with the program itself. I noticed that there is no ruler tool and there is no gradient tool. <laughs> I use gradients a lot as like a general overlay for all of my, well not all of my digital art, but some of my digital art as you probably saw with Sting. I put a gradient over it and then I usually put it to the multiply blending mode and then play around with the opacity because I feel like it just makes it more interesting to look at. And I can live without the gradient tool because I was able to make a gradient with some of the other brushes because I have an easier time blending with these brushes, but it was still difficult. But the ruler tool was real annoying because I used the ruler tool a lot for like stuff like this, where in the background there's that spider web thing 
and I just couldn't <laughs> make it with the ruler, I ended up using the rectangular select tool thingy and kind of making straight lines with that. But it was still really annoying to not have a ruler tool. Overall though, I do really like this program. There's still a lot that I don't know about it, but I'm excited to use it more because it's definitely an art program that I'm going to be using a lot more. I'm not sure if it's going to be the main one that I use, but it's a really great program. I would highly recommend it to anyone. So about the art itself, I wanted each piece to kind of be consistent with the other one, I guess. What I mean by that is that I wanted you to look at them and then when you're looking at all of them, you can tell that they're a part of a set of drawings. So to do that, I made the canvas the same size, I used the same size line art for all of them, except for Orgo, which I accidentally used a 12 instead of a 10 brush. But anyways, I used the same size line art, I made the characters about the same size, although I did change some of them to show that the characters themselves are different sizes. I used that same simple style, where it's kind of like chibi-ish with no-nos. <laughs> and for all of the drawings, I also used the same color to shade and add the highlights. I also kept it consistent by just straight up copying and pasting the gradient, which is why you see me going back to Sting a lot, who's the first character that I drew, because I just copy and paste the gradient and that background element of the spider web to all of them because it's a nice way to kind of keep them all together and I didn't want to try and remake the gradient and have the colors be off in all of that. I also did a bit of a line art thing where I have kind of like a purple line art and then on top of that I have the same line art but in black and then I put it to the overlay blend mode and I did change the opacity and like played around with it but overall I think from what I remember all of the line arts for all of the drawings just have 100% opacity in the end, which is fine. <laughs> I also tried to have the same light source for all of the drawings to kind of help make it look like they're a part of the same set. I said earlier that I shaded with the same color, and that is true, but for some of them, like when I'm drawing Minerva for example, she has a lot of darker colors on hers because I made her a witch. And so for the darker colors, I did use the same color, but I made an additional layer and I lowered the opacity even more because I didn't like how harsh the shading looked. On the darker colors, it was just borderline black and sometimes it just even was black and I didn't really like that. So I put them on a different layer and I lowered the opacity and I think that helped a lot. Now if you watch Fairy Tale and if you know the Sabretooth Guild, the costumes that they're in kind of make sense for them, or at least I think they do. In my mind, they make sense. <laughs> and some of them don't really, I guess, make sense. Some of them were just kind of process of elimination, like Yukino. I don't think that she suits a skeleton necessarily, but I was trying to keep it to more classic Halloween costumes, which is why, you know, Sting's a vampire, and then Rogue is a werewolf, and Minerva's a witch, because I wanted it to just kind of be very obviously Halloween. And then some of them, when I was like running out, I just kind of had to give them to someone, which is why Yuki knows the skeleton and stuff like that. But for the most part, I think that the costumes can match up with their personality or just them as a character pretty well, which I'm really happy with. I've actually been thinking about this video for months, <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. So I had a lot of time to think about who was going to be wearing what costume and stuff like that. So I hope that you like it. Some of them actually had a pretty hard time coming up with what they were going to be. Like with Rufus, it was, a str I couldn't, man. <laughs> it was really hard for me to come up with a costume that I think suited him. And I decided for Orga to kind of make him like a, the Frankenstein monster. And so I guess Rufus would be Frankenstein. <laughs> He's kind of supposed to be like a mad scientist type of person. I, I don't really know why. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense to anybody else. In my head it kind of makes sense. But I don't know. Am I alone on that? <laughs> I don't know. I think it mostly makes sense because Rufus and Orga are kind of seen as like a duo, I guess. At least in the fandom, I don't really remember if they're portrayed as that like in the show <laughs> itself. But a lot of the fans see it that way and since uh, Orgo was Frankenstein monster, I figured, you know, this was the best way to 
include him. And I also wanted to include those two because I feel like they're left out a lot in a lot of the Sabretooth stuff. Because kind of like the main characters from Sabretooth are staying rogue, Yukino and Minerva. And I feel like these two kind of get left out a lot. But I think they're really fun characters. So I wanted to be sure to include them, even if it means giving them a costume that makes sense to nobody but me. <laughs> Another thing I kind of want to touch on really quick is asking you guys what video lengths you normally watch. Does that make sense? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that when I was filming this, even though the drawings themselves didn't take me very long, since there are a lot of them, <laughs> it had to speed up the footage pretty fast. And obviously since it is like a speed draw, it's going to be sped up, but I feel like with the speed that it's at, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing, and I feel like it's just all over the place. But I didn't want to make the video too long, so I felt like I had to speed them up this way. So let me know what you guys think. Do you prefer it like this, or would you want me to slow it down a little bit? So then that way it's a longer video, but you can kind of understand what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm kind of bad at commentaries, <laughs> so I might run out of things to say and just start rambling. But, I mean, you know, you guys can comment things for me to talk about, or if you want some art advice or anything like that, then I can do that and then make a longer video. So be sure to let me know what you think about that, because I, I don't know what I'm doing ever. For me personally, I kind of like a mix of short videos and long videos. It really depends on what I'm doing. Like if I'm having something on it's kind of like background noise, I'll put on a longer video. Or one thing that I like to do is that I like to sketch and then watch art videos on YouTube. But when I'm doing that, I like longer videos because it's like I'm just kind of sitting with somebody and sketching with them, which is really nice to have. But sometimes I'd like to just have like a shorter video to watch because I don't feel like paying attention <laughs> to that long video. So on my channel, I think I'm gonna try and keep a mix of both, but I also want to make sure that you guys are happy with what I'm making. So hopefully I can find a happy medium for everyone. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think so I can try and find something that works. I'm talking about the X suits for a minute. I actually had quite a difficult time drawing them because they're animals and I don't draw animals. And on top of that, I don't draw stylized animals, which the X seeds are. They are stylized animals, which I'm bad at. <laughs> I think in the end they turned out okay. I am better at drawing Frosh than Lecter because I did used to doodle Frosh quite a lot, like on the back of my math homework and stuff when I was in high school. So I do have some experience drawing Frosh, and Lecter was a little bit more difficult because if you watch the show and you see all the X seeds, they kind of have like a base face shape, and Lecter's is a little bit different from that because he's more fluffy than the rest of them so he has like some face fluff and he has more fluff like on the end of his tail and stuff which I didn't really have to draw in this one because I made him a devil and I gave him the little devil tail but it was still difficult and Lecter was also difficult because since I did make him a devil because I made him a devil because his fur is red and that's literally it like there's no other reason and then I kind of wish I ha I didn't do that <laughs> because since there is like a lot of reds and oranges I feel like the costume kind of blends in with his fur I tried to make his fur more like a pink red and then like the other stuff more orange so hopefully it doesn't blend in too much but I still am not completely satisfied with it. Frosh also didn't take very long at all. I think Frosh took me about an hour to do just because it's so simple. Coloring it I used literally two colors which is the green of their fur and then kind of a pinkish white color for the ghost thing. I decided to make it kind of a pinkish white because if you know Frosh Frosh wears like a pink frog onesie footy pajama thing all the time. So I kind of made it like an off pink color to kind of hint at that. But yeah, since Frosh didn't take me very long at all, that means we're coming to the end of the video. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. It actually took quite a long time to make, which is weird because it doesn't feel like it did because the drawings themselves didn't take very long. But anyways, what did we learn today? I don't know what you guys learned, but I learned that there's no ruler tool in Paint Tool Sai, even though ruler is an essential tool to use as an artist, so I don't know why they wouldn't put in a ruler tool. <sighs> but anyways, <laughs> despite me struggling to not have a ruler, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to comment which one of these is your favorite, and also 
comment about what video lengths you guys generally like to watch because I'd love to hear that. Uh, follow me on social media, <laughs> that's a thing. I'll have my usernames on screen now, and I'll also have the links in the description below. They're in the description of all my videos, but I don't ever really mention that. I'm most active on Instagram. I'll have a video on screen for you right now to watch if you're interested, and also in the iCard. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. I mostly post art videos, but every now and again I do post something that isn't really art related. But if you're interested in any of that, please subscribe, that'd be really cool. And I hope you have a lovely Halloween, and have, if you're not celebrating Halloween, then just have a nice day, I guess. <laughs> Bye!